Hello, it's Sarah, and I think I filmed, I'm going to upload something today, I think, but I think I filmed a little bit of me burning this project. So this is a uh, adult coloring book page that I uploaded and printed out, and then I traced it onto this box that I got at Michael's. This is about 8x8, eight eight. One, two, three, four. yep. And it was really nice on top because since I've gotten the book by B. Locke that talked about the resin spots, because this is, I always thought it was basswood if it was um, nice and smooth like that. But it, it, there, it could be pine. It could be whatever. I mean, I'm no wood expert. I'm just seeing if I can get that off. I did um, spray this already because I've been painting it. Um, but anyway, the sides, which I was going to film, but I don't know. I, I was up to like 2 in the morning doing the sides last night. And they're not as all at all um, neat as the top because there was resin in the sides. And also it's the sides, so it wasn't as uh, easy to burn. But the top I do feel pretty uh, happy about. It is... I didn't add every line that was on the drawing. I left off these little comma or yeah, these little commas that go around here. Um, some things I left off, extra little lines and details that I just didn't feel were really necessary to give this, you know, it looks it looks good the way it is. So, but then I decided to take this portion of the mandala design and put that all around the side, which I hadn't really done before. And I, the one thing I regret, if anything, there's a little, this line, see, and it's such a petty little nothing, but this line right here, that little extra, you can't even see, I'm not even showing it. I painted it gold, but I could have had that up here too. I don't know, and I think it would have just given it, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty happy with it. I, I didn't remove these hinges, but I did remove the latch on the front. And I didn't add every little detail line. I did it good enough. Um, and it's it's sloppy and messy because there were resin spots. I'm telling you, now that I know about the resin, I'm so, I get it. It's just a messy, slippery, stinky um, element in the wood that is not a, a burning's friend at all. But that being said, in the front turned out like this is so much neater with the, the dots on here are so much cleaner and neater. And then my dots over here got squishy. And again, I think it's because of the resin. My burner, like when I put the dot down, it was like slipping. It, ugh, it's a mess. But anyway, I'm going to paint this with you guys today. My intention is not to make it as dark. Now, I absolutely love my dragonfly box. This is this isn't going anywhere. This is mine. Um, right now, I'm holding my beads in it, my bracelets, I should say, um, and I put a little bit of uh, felt in the bottom. So it's kind of I think it's mine forever. I just love it. Um, this one maybe as well. I've been making malas and I have them in uh, another box. No, they're just sitting over there. But this could fit malas and it could just, I don't know, because it's a cigar box. But I'm thinking I might put some felt in the bottom of this too. Uh, and then I could use it again. It's, it's kind of like I was trying to put, uh, anyway, don't, I'm not going to talk about that. But anyway, let me paint. So I don't think I'm going to add color besides white, gold, brown, and I'm going to use the soft black. I did soft black just around a few of the darkest, darkest areas, and that's what I'm going to do on here as well. Um, so let's get started. I've talked enough. I'm just going to use this dirty piece of um, palette paper. I'm going to just show you again. I'm going to remind you, everyone, those of you who watch know. Oh, I don't even have the lid on here, but palette paper, and I think I got this at like Marshall's or something, so for real cheap you can get it at the craft store in the art department um it's like a it's got a slick surface to it but i used to tell people that use the um tim holtz craft mat that like it had a shiny little uh feel to it that you could use to load your brush and when i say load your brush that's the way that i get 
this graduation of color from dark to light that gives you the shaded effect. Alexa, turn on the craft fan. Just a little, okay. I get myself all heated up. Um, I'm gonna, I can still use this. This is paper towel. I mean, it's kind of dingy looking, but I can still use it. You need a piece of paper towel, a couple folded pieces of paper towel to absorb the water when you load your brush. So I am gonna start out with Let's see. I'm going to start out with the traditional burnt umber, and I'm just going to start to add shading on my lotus flower, first of all, to show you how we're going to make it look a little more dimensional. So, in other words, these petals that are behind, you want to make them look like they're behind, and then these ones that are the most forward, this one's the most forward, and then these, and then these. So it's, it's a dimensional thing, right? Uh, 3D. That's that's my intention. So I'm using an angle brush, and I got these beautiful brushes. I love them. They're the Joe Sonia Sure Touch um, angle brushes. These are made in India. Just FYI, <laughs> I don't know, but they have a synthetic hair. They're not um, real hair. There are brushes, all types of different brushes, but these are doing the job for me right now, and I am very very hard on my brushes. Uh, I'm going to use the half inch today for now, and I have water here, this water bucket, and it's dirty water, so I don't want to give you a close up. And I'm just getting the bristles wet. So this is very wet, saturated with water, drippy as a matter of fact. And I'm going to blot on my paper towel and just let that water get sucked out into the, into the paper towel. But I still want water on there. You can still see the sheen. It's pretty wet. Now I'm going to load the paint. So I take, I put a little burn number here and I put a little on the, just that tip of the brush there, the angle part. Then I take this to my palette, my paper palette, I should say. Let me move this over. Okay. I put the paint down here because I'm going to go back to this to reload because this has paint and water mixed together now. So, and I'll be able to use all that eventually. And I'm just pushing the paint, and what's happening is the paint is now darkest on this end, and it goes across the brush. It floats across the brush on the water, and there's just water here. So let me show you really close, close, close. You can see all that water. So I don't have to keep going into my paint water bucket. I don't have to go to my paint. I can come right back here. So this is loaded. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it. I really don't want it too dark, but I'm such a dark floater. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I have to focus on what I'm doing. I'm going to try and, okay, all right, okay. So what I did was I took the darkest color point of this brush and stuck it right up against that petal and just pull it down and tuck it down in. It matters how you hold the brush as well. You can pivot because when I pick up the brush, I'm going to leave a little uh, trail of water there sometimes, and that's where the mop comes in because you can push that, you can push it. This doesn't, this stays dry. All right, now the fan's on so it's not as wet, but I can come right back here and pick up a little bit more of that, um, well, it wasn't in the shot, and I'm going to go back here this time and stick that color right up against the petal and this would be the darkest. So maybe I'll darken that with a soft black in a minute. But for right now, all right, I have to reload. Go into a little bit of water. Let me come up. It's way too zoomy because I, I come out of the shot way too much if it's too zoomy. Um, let me move everything back out of the way. Okay. Um, I go back into the water blot. Uh, where's my paint? <laughs> I lost my paint corner load and then go back to the palette paper and just again load it up so that it floats across the bristles I have paint and water because the water makes the paint move if it was just paint it would just sit there like a lump and I'm going down this whole I am so oh, I'm such a good floater but it's I'm trying to keep I don't want to lose the um, the natural color of the wood. 
on camera it looks pretty good. It doesn't look as dark on camera. And I'm just going to keep doing that. That's all I'm going to do to paint this whole entire thing. There's no base coating. Well, I actually already did the gold. So I'm going to stick this here up against that petal again. It, sh it would be darkest down there and it would kind of peter out as I got to the top. right up against this petal as well and I think I will darken with a smaller brush I'm gonna try now this one that's behind I just didn't go into my water bucket first I just went into the paint to get a little denser and I'm just see how look how my brush is angled I'm sticking the darkest color there and I'm just gonna leave it there this is how what I really need to do instead of pulling it all the way but it needs to be in those darkest darkest areas this is what I'm gonna do with the soft black for right now I'm gonna do it with the brown and then when I want to make it the darkest darkest really deep shading I'm gonna do it with the soft black so I'll leave this alone for a little bit and I'll come in with the soft black in a minute and I'll show you how it's gonna really create that uh, deepest darkest shading now this petal would be shaded as well because it it actually goes down under into the the base of the lotus so I have to put some shading here right and as well all of this would be shaded now I'm just gonna start moving around I'm gonna go now this I was debating this little piece right here I could have painted gold I still can damn I think I want to I'm gonna paint it gold before I shade on top of it now let me go let's just do a few of these petals and you know this is the the thing about this piece is these flowers I could be doing this in color and it would be so gorgeous but I'm just, I'm really trying to embrace this look, the way, and I'm gonna highlight some things with white. So just this white, gold, and brown, and this one I did with color, I like, and so it's six of one, I'll, I'll do this again. I'll do it again for sure. I mean, it, it's a lot of work, but maybe I'll sell it. And I could, I don't know, I gotta, I gotta come up with a price that includes all this work that I do you know and that's the thing it's so hard um, really each of these little tiny petals should be shaded too <laughs> you know so it's interesting I and if a petal looks like it's like this petal was on top of that petal so you have to kind of shade where it like overlaps but for me the I, the whole idea with me painting these pieces is because I'm not I can't do it with my with my burner right now I don't know how to get it to look right with my shading burner uh, tip you know and I get if I did all this work on this line work and then I went into shade and I mess it up I, I get so mad so I really need to do smaller pieces that I that are not as intricate and just practice the shading technique <clears throat> and I've talked about this before I'm just I just like getting it done and I'm, I'm enjoying this uh, the way the paint looks like I do like the look of the paint so it's kind of like a twofer it's a it's a decorative painting piece but it's a wood burn piece as well you know now this flower is completely underneath this other one so when I use the soft black that's when I'm gonna take and shape and really put everything really deep behind you know All right let me get the gold out for a second I'll I want to finish the Lotus so what else do I want to tell you I've been doing um, a lot of these pieces with you guys and I know it's very repetitive um, I'm sure that works for some people who want to learn this and stuff but 
those of you who want me to do polymer clay, um, I feel inspired sometimes. Um, it's summer, and we have a lot, like yesterday, we did stuff outside. OMG. We have a big project that we want to do some brickwork on our path that our our pathway up to the house has always uh the mulch falls over the edge of the path it's so annoying anyway so we're going to put some brick there and it'll match the other side you know and um so we did all that we laid that out yesterday and got i got the porch it was so gorgeous yesterday what was it like 80 degrees out all right let me look and see yeah, I like that. Um, so I won't be in the craft room as much, I imagine. I'm going to try and be outdoors. I'm going to be doing macrame again. So I want to do, I'm, gonna, I'm making a zen den, you guys. OMG. So this is good. Let me have a sip of my iced coffee. Oh, I need a straw. Anyway, <clears throat> I want to shade this too. This was what I, all right, I'm going to finish talking about that in a minute. But this got so, if I shade here, all these little elements got muddied. So I want to be careful when I shade that. I'm going to finish this. I'll just keep talking while I wait for that to dry. So we have a very, I think, some of you have seen my house tours that I've done, like when I shared my painted pieces or whatever it is. Um, anyway, we built on our TV room. That's where we watch TV. And so my kids are grown. I used to use the other room with the TV in it for their video games and stuff. So that like it just that's all they did in there was play video games and have their friends in there and stuff like that. That's not happening anymore. <laughs> That's like 20 years ago, Sarah. So I'm repurposing this room and I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, it's gonna take a minute. We gotta get rid of all everything in there first, but I, I, in my mind, I created this no phone zone, Zen Den, right? So I, I have these imaginations of me uh, in there reading books doing meditation um, and being present. Now, if I have a friend over or something, we're just going to chat. That's where we're going to chat. You know, we don't, I don't want to go into where the TV room is. And I'm just so excited. It's just going to have, it's going to be open. I'm going to have my plants in there. I was even thinking of getting a fish tank so that it would be, I'm going to do this area here. So that it's like live stuff and a very present place to be. Um, so I, I have some projects that I'm doing that aren't always crafting, but they're still creative, you know. So this is here. I'm just going to go all the way across. I ran out of paint and water already. I'm just going to start here and go. And when I use the soft black, I will definitely redo that. But I think I've gotten everything behind. And now I have to get these three separated in the front. Um, so yeah, so it's only March. Boy, that was, it was such an, a nice day for March. I couldn't believe it. But everything's starting to pop. The forsythia. Um, some of the flowering trees that are in my neighborhood, I think they're called cherry blossoms probably. Um, or we have flowering trees too that are, uh, have buds. So it's so exciting. I'm just so grateful. We got through it, you guys. We got through this winter of COVID and I go for my second shot on the 2nd, I think, of April. First or second, it's a Friday. I forget. Oh, and James's birthday, my son's birthday is the third. This is going under this leaf, so it would be shaded there. Anywho, so stuff is happening, and I want to get. Last summer, we didn't get as much 
planting done because everything was shut down. Um, New Jersey went into lockdown, I think it was May, like the beginning of May, everything closed. Like we were supposed to be quarantining and so I didn't get my normal flowers that I would normally get, um, which was fine. And, um, you know, so I'm just looking forward to and hoping we can do that this year. And if we can't, you know, it'll be fine either way. But look, it's just, I am just so uh, happy that I'm able to be present and just enjoy what I can enjoy now. This is looking a little naked all around there because of the shading, but it looks great. This side right here looks darker than this side. I don't know if I went here. So when I go with the soft black, I'm really going to tuck it in the darkest areas. And I'm going to hopefully have a two-tone thing going on. So here I go. I'm going to go around and shade up against this ring and see what happens. like I need a lot of water because I want this to hopefully go oops I went right on the gold helps if I put my pinky down on the surface and then I can move my thumb and my fourth my pointer finger to move the brush I, I like took out the cushions on the we have a, um, a front porch that has uh, a roof so I had put everything away even, I mean, it, it still gets buggy, like, you know, cobwebby and stuff. So I swept everything and, uh, um, gotta go here. I'm just chatting with you guys. But yeah, and it was so nice. So now the, uh, like, I really wish they, we got that, we have a furniture set out there that's like wicker and it's pretty old, but it's, the furniture's in good shape, but the cushions are starting to take their, you know, they're getting like just marks or just look old, you know. And I think I w tried to replace them, but they don't make, they're like really big. Anyway, um, so I have to, oh, okay, wait, I got to go behind this flower. So I just perk it up with um, throw pillows and stuff like that. Like right here would be dark. And that's what I mean. Like I start to lose all the um, the brightness of the ba of the wood tone. So I don't like when I do what you would normally do in decorative painting. I just have to be gentle and I'm not the most gentle. But like, you know, it would be shaded there. All right, let me look at that. I like it because it's pulling the color tones together. And I am going to highlight places with white. So you can see where I did just those little things. No, very little. It's a much bigger version of this. So I got to do the leaves. Um, so anywho same process you guys that's why I'm chatting so much because it's not like I'm doing anything different this is exactly oops what I've been doing the whole time I just went out of line and I hit where did I just do that right at the tip of the right there um, so that's what I mean it's not like I'm sometimes in a class what would I be saying the same exact thing the whole time if I were teaching this you know what I mean um, just where to shade is what I'd be telling you. Just right up against the petals. Oops, I went on that petal too. And I think I could go down the vein as well. I would definitely do it if it was just a decorative painting piece, but because it's all one color, I don't want to... No, I keep complaining, but I don't want to lose all of the... My nose is a little itchy, and I take Zyrtec every day, but um, it's spring, you guys. I'm so excited. So, yeah, so maybe not as many videos coming. Uh, I'm hoping, and then once the hot hits, though, I'll be inside. Trust me, I will be making videos again because 
I don't do well in the hot hot I don't like it and really unless you're in the pool or in the air conditioning I, I don't like it <laughs> now this I think I'm gonna put shading here for sure up against that leaf um, yeah I don't like the hot hot so that's why like today is 66 I definitely will be walking a dog I wanted to get this done because like I said I was up really late last night and I just couldn't stop myself um, so yeah like this I'm tempted to go but that would be highlighted this is where the shading would be on this side because of the way the leaf is tipping I would put the shading on that side and have the highlight going that way um, again same thing but that's coming together something's going I don't even really know what this is like here's what the picture original picture looks like like this it's just a Paisley or something I don't really know what it's supposed to be uh, all right I think another really so this is gonna be <clears throat> I'm going to shade behind the mandala all the way around the piece and then I should be shading behind the lotus flower OMG I'm going to do it and just see what it looks like and again I will use the soft black just in the darkest darkest areas like here that I'm going to darken up with soft black I want to tell you something about this okay so when I'm doing this if I pick up my brush you can get left with a, a hard line there of color and in order to get it to look soft you kind of have to swivel and pivot and pull the water around this turn with you you can't just lift your brush you'll leave the water line there but if you pivot and turn you can pull the water line down so I should mention that like that's what I like about a class is I, I actually messaged Belock, the one who, um, the book I just got, the one that did this design, and asked her if she'd ever thought of teaching a class because it's one thing to read the directions and, you know, I know what kind of tool to use and all that stuff. But if I, I, I really need to hear, boy, I made that too dark. I really need to hear what they're thinking and why they stopped where they stopped and how much pressure they're putting and all that stuff helps if you're really trying to learn to be as good as they are you know I mean a lot of times like she's self-taught I think like it says she's self-taught and that's good I I could be self-taught I'm sure it's from trial and error right isn't an al -Anon teaches me that too you know you gain confidence as well from trying things and failing anywho anywho it's just that she provides us this book I don't know I just feel like classes are so helpful for me, I learned so much from taking so many different teachers, taking lessons from so many different teachers that it, it's it's priceless, really, to, to get that one-on-one -on -one knowledge, you know. Um, that looks pretty, but I, I should go around here, and it's going to get so dark. And then all under here, like behind the lotus, I have to still... And I think I'm going to do this with soft black as well. But like I said, I'm, I'm going to go to a smaller brush. And I'm really going to try and keep 
the color really, really small right up against. See, I just went right over that leaf. I'll pop it with um, the white. So there's a lot of work that I'm going to be doing on here. It's like just building, building, building. Um, I should be going up against this whole area here. Tucking it in here. I have one more little flower. I, these two flowers I didn't do yet. So I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to get all of the dark brown done and I'm going to come back when I put the soft black on and then I'm going to do the white last and um, finish this baby up. I'll be right back. Okay. So this isn't even a one inch. This isn't the brush she used. Hers was specifically hers, right? I have it. It's around here somewhere, but I have I hold my brushes in here now, and I it can't hold all my brushes, obviously, but she, it was a little stubbier, so in other words, it was cut shorter, but she could get a float. She would just use this many bristles or this many bristles, so in other words, if you want a nice wide float, you need more bristles because then you can get a bigger graduation of color. Um, I also walk it out. You can walk it out, but she would do the whole piece with one brush, even the little intricate stuff. And I mean, her pieces are intricate. So in other words, I'm going to try and float this. But then what I wanted to mention was they make them small too. So what I tend to do, because I load my brush so well, right, I can't help but have, I don't know why I can't stop myself and only load this little part of the brush because it's possible. You just don't walk it down as far. That way, so I switch to a much smaller brush because then when I load this little guy, I'll only have that little bit of graduation of color because I still always want to have water on this end of the brush. So. It just logically makes more sense that I would go to a smaller brush. That doesn't mean you have to. So, in other words, let me come down here and show you what I'm doing. So this little flower petal, if I were using what I've been using, I've been using this one, which is a half inch, right? When I lay down the color, there's going to be color all the way out to the end of the petal because the brush is bigger than the petal. If I were loading this with all the bristles. But this one is the same size as the petal, so if I load it and there's only brown going halfway across, which is what it's supposed to be, and then there's water on the other end, I'm going to be able to get the color to go where I want it to go without being too much. And so when I say I'm a heavy hand, that means when I load this brush, I am loading it fully, generally without thinking, I just go in and load it. So I have to think. <laughs> you know what? You guys know that watch my channel. I don't like to think. <laughs> I'm learning. I'm learning to think and, and to be patient and to... Uh, yeah, so I am loading this brush, but it, the paint went all the way over, so I'm going to rinse. If you look at this runway, this is where the water ended, but the color is there. That should just be bubbles, but I can see a line of brown. You see what I'm saying? So I know that when I loaded this, I walked the color too far over. So with a small brush like this, you just have to be so patient. This is still just water. I'm blotting because it's really wet. The brush is kind of falling apart on me a little. I'm not liking that. Like the the end bristles, um, maybe I'm push I pushed too hard. I'm sorry. All right, this is looking good. Okay. So I'm going to come over here to my piece. The other thing is I can't get this to go as far as I would with a bigger brush because there's it doesn't hold as much paint or as much water, so I have to reload it more often. All right, so that is my extra little tidbit of info for you guys. I 
would w sit next to people in classes that were using this tiny little brush and just making stripes all around their piece because they weren't they overloaded it they were they weren't leaving that little water area I don't know I hope I you understand what I'm saying now this is part of I'm just gonna put color there because it's part of the background so you understand what I'm saying so I'm gonna do this little this guy here I don't even know if I was in a shot yeah this brush is actually a little too small for me I'm just gonna go to my this is a 3 8 inch I just it's too small I'm gonna be able to get further the more water the brush holds I feel the further you can go in your work because you need water in order for the paint to move now I just have to be careful not to load this all the way to the edge and just keep the color so right here I'm gonna go across this guy and up the sides hopefully I'm in the shot I oh, so sorry I'll come out I'll zoom out oh excuse me I'm gonna go here so I don't even know what this is or what it's doing <laughs> I don't know it's just a swirly I don't know I just put color there and then I'm gonna go here maybe under here and then all of those I'll do the swirly again but I want to make white on those petals and then I'll go on top of this uh, gold line as well. Anywho, I want to show you what the big brush can do. Let me come up. So I'm going to use this. It's not even an inch. It's only uh, three quarter. But this sucker can hold a lot more water. It's a little dense. I like that. This is a low Cornell angular. It's called, and I do well with the low Cornell brushes as well. Um, I'm going to also put in the description box where I got these um, Jasonia Shore Touch brushes. And I mean, maybe they're a little expensive, but they're a good quality brush. I've talked a lot about brushes on my videos as well. Um, so I'm going to get a little more brown out. And I'm going to do this up against this border um, with this bigger brush and show you. And then when I come back with the soft black, I'm just going to do keep it to the corners. I'll show you what happens. Okay, so I'm getting it nice and wet. I mean, this is like really, really wet. Okay, then of course you blot. So I'm going to blot it. But there's still lots of water in the brush. Corner load, just like always. Lots of paint right there, but I'm putting it down. I'm going to put it here and walk away from it first. So really what I'm doing is I'm putting down paint and water now. There's water there too because it's all mixed together. Oh man, this is so slickety and good. So I'm going to take it and start right in this corner with the bristles up against there. Oh dear. It doesn't have as chisely of an edge as some brushes. And really just try to keep it. I'm going to go back to that landing strip. I needed a little bit more water. And but I'm going to stop right here and I pick it up and see look, my brush is dried out. It's if it was wet, it would be staying together. So I've used all that water to, to move that paint along the line. And it's darkest where I put it down, but that's going to get even darker. So I'm going to go down this side. I'm going to get it really wet again. Blot, load, and work it into the bristles. I, I want a lot of water, probably more than I normally would. I'm going to start this side this time because I want it to get all the way across. So you put it down. And see my pinky is on the piece kind of guiding me so that I don't go across that line. And I'm picking up what I left on the um, palette.
Now, if there's enough water there, you can pull that out into the water. But it's it's there's no real water there. I'm just going to take off if I I don't want it to be on this area. So let me show you. Let's see how big this is. I was able to bring it out. <clears throat> so this is a three quarter inch brush. I would say the water, so it goes from darkest by a half inch, I'm running out of paint, and then by the three quarter inch mark, it's just water. So in other words, there could be a line right here if I had paint on the brush at the end right here I'll show you if I had paint bleed all the way down I would leave a stripe you would see a water line right there but because there was just water here I it kind of peters out it melts and it I can't explain it but <clears throat> that's the idea so um, I'm gonna go around here and I really love the brightness I don't know if I want to use this brush because I don't I will walk it three quarters of an inch right Do I want to do it I do I do all right so again I'm just loading this three quarters of an inch brush lots of water because I need it to slide all the way across. I'm going to butt it up against here. I ran out. Yeah, this brush isn't really holding as much water as... See, look, I lose it. It starts to... But I got the, I got the, so in other words, it's, it doesn't look like it's a graduation of color. And that's all because of how I've loaded the brush. So I just wanted to come back on and tell you that because if you learn that, you're going to have so much more control and um, be happier with your floats because I, I'm telling you, I sat next to so many people in classes who were just making stripes all over their piece and so frustrated and I would just be teaching them <laughs> I'm, and that's a situation where I shouldn't have been because I should said you got to ask the teacher <laughs> but you know at our little desk I just showed them how to do it but um I got to know my place it's not my place to teach the class of other teachers classes that's a lesson I learned the hard way no uh, <laughs> let me see I kind of want to go down here this stump this needs something here I'm gonna do it here I went down to a smaller brush but you know what's funny is this video is already quite long and I don't know who's gonna stick with it long enough to get that little tidbit of info <laughs> but it's important info so I maybe should have said it in the very beginning um, so I may do a specific video about it because it's very um, interesting uh, good stuff all right all right so I'm gonna continue I'm gonna finish this this and then I'll be back when I'm ready to do the dark the soft black all right I'm so glad that on camera it doesn't look as dark as it feels when I'm looking at it in person because it was so bright before it's such a difference I did add a little more gold I decided to add some gold to these little dots here um, and I think that's it I actually on the bigger version I did those in white to pop them because I had the gold of right here so on this one I felt like it was okay that I put uh, both I kind of want to do the white before I do the dark um, I think I am going to do the white it's gonna be so fun to see it pop so I'm not actually using white I'm using um, where is it buttermilk here 
light light ivory just something not white so I think they might be here Matt I see a white car so I'm just putting some out and I'm really gonna hit the tips mostly so uh, let's see my bad I don't know what size brush I want to use I think I want to use this one this is um, 3 eighths inch so I'm going to corner load it and it's hard to see the white on my palette paper so I I don't <laughs> I can't find my landing strip as easily but let's just go right in with on the petals here on the flower petals Uh, it's hard to find where you left the paint. And, oh man, this is going to make such a difference. And you see how my brush is pointed up? Because I want the, the water edge to be down. So, just the petal tip. Hopefully I'm in, in the shot. I don't even know if I'm zoomed in come down a little bit for you guys and it's subtle but I can see it and when I add that satin varnish it's gonna be popping maybe white would make it pop better you know but I'm I don't know I've been I don't know why my brain told me not to use white but I might, I might change to white to get it to pop. Because it's there. It's there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to white. Alright, I decided to switch to white. And you can see it so much better. So, I don't know what was making me think that I wanted to use light buttermilk. I think I used it on some one of these. I think this is light buttermilk. So this one is, you know. I'm gonna go over here because it really makes it pop. The white. Uh oh boy, see these three flowers right here? Man, they are going to pop when I add this white. So that's what I feel like I can't... Once I add all the brown, and I'm assuming that's what it would be like if I were paint, if, if I were wood burning it, you know? I lose the brightness, and I don't... I feel like you need the highs and lows, you know? You need the darks and brights so things can shine and pop out like I'm not gonna do too much on the side because that is shaded but the little petals that like are sticking out where they would be highlighted that's where I really just want to like I'm gonna come in a tiny bit more but you can see that on camera so nice so like this petal I have too much paint on there told you I can't see the white on the palette so I oop. sometimes I move I push it too far into the the pot the puddle because I put the puddle on the palette this time so I wouldn't have to um anyway oh boy that was a loud noise sorry Kiwi's with me Maddie made a pop noise somehow Oh, I think there's, you know what, we get like yellow jacks in the house. I live in the woods and like sometimes they find their way in here. They're like wasps or some type of flying, stinging type of bug. And I try to get, rid, get them out, but my boys kill them. I, I try to get them out. I don't care. They're not trying to sting me. And they're, they're not, they didn't come in here because they wanted to. It's because they're a dumb bug. All right, so this is a flower. I need to highlight that. But yeah, this is the part I love because this is popping. 
now it's starting to pop up. So right here, right here, and right here. And then these little guys, I kind of want to do white. That didn't work. And then I think I want to do, well, let's do the lotus flower. It helped so much. I guess I could do the leaves. I, I might do them gold. All right, let's do the lotus, though. I'm going to do the lotus with my little bit bigger brush. Definitely on the outside of the petals, like right here. So I'm just going to go right over everything. But I'm tucking it. I tucked it. I don't want to come down into here. Um, this side. and then tuck it like right before you get down in there. There wouldn't be highlight down there. Now there's gold there, so maybe I'll just do this little tip and this little tip. So right here. I don't want it to be. Just really the tippiest tip of it. There we go. And over on this one, this would be highlighted. I probably don't need this big brush. I'm going to switch to the littler one. It's a little hard, but see, I'm going to start and pivot. So I'm going to push it this way. Start here and just pivot. Start here and just pull it up. There would be some over here. I kind of went over that, which I don't want to do. Um, this is on top, so this would definitely have some highlight. I think I'm going to paint in that with white like just to make it brighter but like it would be it would be highlighted right here for sure and here but yeah I'm gonna do it but see then it goes under that so that's a tricky one right here um right here I'm just throwing it places now Oh man, on camera it looks really good. So it looks like I'm still popping things up. Let's see. Um, I think I am going to add, I'm going to float gold on the leaves. Let's see. I like when I float gold. It's really, it's just subtle. Like it's, okay, so like right here. That's the highlight. So you can still see through it, but it's just a shimmer. And it really does highlight it. Um, There's a little one here, but you really can't see him. I'm going to put a little sh highlight there, but he's just kind of poking. There's one here, too. I almost forgot to shade those um, right here. Oops. A yeah. whole bunch of color there. I'm just going to throw some right here, too. I want to put some on the, on the lotus, too. Maybe coming down this side.
because I have it here and here it wasn't there. I think that makes it look better. Um, nothing's really calling out to me. This would be dark, actually. This would not be highlighted. I'm going to do these, uh, these little right here. I'll have to shade over them, but I think I want to pop those. I could do these too. I could have floated them. The other way too dark. Like that would be shaded. So that looks good. I'm going to do it more as a wash. Actually, if I just put my finger on top of it, there you go. That's going to be shaded in there with the soft black. My brush is dry. That was basically a dry brush, <laughs> which is a technique. It's a very cool technique. Um, where else should I put white, you guys? I think I could highlight a little bit on the leaves, too, on the very lightest lights of the leaves like let's see if I even have there's only going to be a couple of spots like this one and this one and this one and there's no leaves over here starting to bring things out though more. I didn't, I feel like things get lost when I just shade it. Okay. So I could do this white as well. There's these little, oh man. I don't want it to be too bright. Not all of the flowers had these little lines. And I did them different on the side. Oops. Well, my mandalas, I really love when I do the checker pattern with the black and white. It really looks nice. There's still a couple spots like these. Some of these dots I thought that I could actually, like right here, I think I want to do um, a dot. I don't know if white would look good because I probably should do gold. I'm going to do gold. This is too big. I was just going to use the end of my um, brush. I'm going to try and use this. But like I, I thought about putting dots over the black because it really looks nice when I've done that before. Not over the black, but over like the the um, dark burns. So in other words, I could put little dots on top of that, and it kind of looks like they're framed. I might do that. Now I did nothing to these right here, here, and here. But I'm going to go in with the soft black. I know this video is so long. But here's what I want to show you about this soft black. It is amazing. I'm going to just do it, like I said, in the darkest dark areas. I'm using the half inch angle. Really want to keep the color just in the darkest dark areas. So right down here.
right here, here. See how I didn't walk it all the way around though? It would be along this whole center piece though. Let's go down here. Just keeping it right up against that petal though. To make it look like it's coming forward. I know where else I need to go. Um, down here. Mm. Here. Here. I think it worked. I'm just looking at the piece. You guys, I think I'm going to come back when it's all done because you basically get the idea. Like right here, I want to make this pop out from the background. This little bud here. He looks like he's just blending in. So I'm going to take the soft black and just put it right here and right here. And hopefully it made that pop out a little. So that's what I'm going to do is just go around and try to separate out the flowers from the mandala. And so I'm going to go around that and then I'll do the corners. And that'll be it, I think. Nope, I need to do right here. Watch this. This is going to be a big one, I hope. Right here. Here, here, I don't know why I have to say here every time I put it down. I love the way the soft black looks on top of the fur number. It's such a pretty combo. So that's how I make that lotus flower pop. All right, I'll see you in a minute. I think I could, I'm gonna do these two corners. You can tell how I put the soft black in those two corners. I'm gonna do these two. I think I could be done, but I wanna come, I think I'm gonna come back and put I'm going to make brown on all the dark burn stuff that I got paint on to make that really dark. And I think I'm going to be done. Um, let me do these corners. Lots of water, guys. And then I just kind of put the paint in the corner. Go this way and then go that way. And just leave it there. just in the corner. So I'm putting the paint in the corner, come down a little bit and go out a little bit that way and just leave it in the corner. I could, I wanted it a little further out. Boy, what a difference from the plain uh, background I had. So you can see where I just put the darkest darks here, here, like really where the, oops, that's still wet and I just put my hand in it. That's okay. Um, I could probably put some darker darks around the outside edge too. I put it here and I just put a little light here. Um, but yeah, I, this is what I mean. I want to take my liner brush 
and just use the brown. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to use the soft black and touch these burned areas and make them dark. Other than that, I think I'm going to call it done because I could keep going over and over this. But I think it's... I actually could use a liner brush to really get these points up here. I don't have a whoop, whoop. Yeah, a liner would be a smart idea, but as I keep going. I'm shaky too because I had um, two cups of coffee. But I just think that brought back some sharpness to that, to those places. So I'm going to just still go around and tweak it, but I think I'm going to end the video. Actually, like, right here would be dark, so I'm going to put soft black there. I really went around the flowers to make that. So like right in here should be dark. Kind of let it sit down. I want the flowers to uh, be f the most forward thing. All right, I, I'm going to play a little more, but I think it's done. Thank you so much for watching.